Awesome. Alrighty. Um, so my name is Rudy. Um, if you haven't met me, met me before, um, yeah, my name is Rodolfo Arredondo, but you can just call me Rudy. I live in LA. Uh, LA is definitely up and coming as far as bars go um, in the craft and mixology world. Um, I love visiting New York. It's more of a spirit forward place to work with, whereas here it's more like fruit forward, uh, lots of fun with tiki and all this other stuff just because of the seasonal fruits and vegetables that are available to us here um, in LA. So um, another thing that I want to make sure I cover is that um, in order to uh, fully complete your course here, uh, just make sure to watch three of these weekly Wednesday videos, as well as send in a 30 second or more video of yourself just explaining something like, oh, this is my favorite cocktail and this is how to make it or something that you've learned here in uh, during these lectures. All right, so any of that will do. Uh, let me go ahead and find that link for you. I did have it here, but I just lost it. So I'm gonna take a second to find that link and then copy paste it for everyone here so that you know where to submit your video. It is here. Okay, and that's the link right there. So just go ahead and submit your 30 second or more video to that link. All right, okay. So let's just get started. Our, um, our lesson today is pretty much just how to create cocktails. Um, it's, it seems hard at first just to, you know, um, because you don't know a lot of ingredients when you're first starting, um, also, you don't know where to go about things uh, typically. So I am going to share with you one moment here. Okay, I'm going to share with you this portion here. Share screen and share. Awesome. Okay, so here, this is like a childhood favorite toy of mine. Uh, this is a Mr. Potato Head, for those of you that don't know. Um, it's Christmas themed just because we are approaching Christmas. Uh, so I wanted to keep it within theme. Um, so uh, the reason why I have this photo here is because whenever we're creating cocktails, we're essentially uh, treating them like Mr. Potato Head. So we'll switch out the eyes, we'll switch out the nose, the mouth, the hands, the feet, uh, the hat. So that's pretty much, that's essentially what it is in a nutshell in cocktail making. Uh, the easiest way that most restaurants tend to create their cocktails is just by uh, taking what is a classic cocktail and taking those ingredients and switching them for ingredients that are within the same realm, okay? Um, so if you don't have a pen and, or a pen and paper or pencil and paper, uh, go ahead and grab that or anything to take notes with, just because I am going to give you something and you should always remember this when you're creating cocktails, okay? One more in, all right. So when you're creating cocktails, there's four pillars, just like uh, this one book that I've seen. I've never read this book, uh, but this book in particular, let's go back to this and then let's go here. Uh, salt, fat, acid, heat. This is a really cool book. It's a cooking book. It's a cookbook. And um, there they have cool, interesting things like this, just charts that kind of give you like a foundation of how to look for certain ingredients and what to put in it. So they have a salt section and that comes with like layering or from within. Um, this is all just cooking though. So we're going to take the exact same approach, but take it to uh, cocktails. All right. So on a piece of paper, our pillars are going to be sweetener, 
acid modifier and spirit okay this is like the basic form of oh does that not show here oh no it doesn't okay well oh did i just i del i deleted it there we go okay my writing is awful but you can kind of see it there. So we got a spirit, modifier, acid, and sweetener. Um, these are what make up a cocktail, okay? It's very important to have all four of these in there. So the spirit, it itself has its own flavor. Uh, a very obvious example of that is something like aquavit or something like rum, where you clearly taste what the, you know, the foundation of that spirit is. So if you're drinking rum, you're drinking the sugar cane um, distillate of, of sugar cane. So there's a certain flavor, there's a sweetness to that spirit. Um, it's not going to be sweet. It's going to definitely be more ethanol-y. It's going to have alcohol. It's going to be aggressive. But you can taste after you get over that ethanol vapor, uh, you can absolutely taste that spirit. Okay. So the spirit is something that's either going to be celebrated in a cocktail or it's just going to, uh, you know, be the bass player of the cocktail. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so spirit, then you have the modifier. The modifier, I believe, is the, the part that kind of gets a little bit confusing for most uh, people. But a modifier essentially is just the, the flavor or... Uh, just whatever you're trying to celebrate in that cocktail. So a modifier would be like, let's say you're making a daiquiri, okay? A daiquiri is going to be rum, uh, lime, and sugar. But now you want to make a strawberry daiquiri, right? So you're going to add like strawberry puree, or you're going to do an infusion with strawberry. But the modifier for that is going to be wherever that strawberry is. So if you're using a strawberry puree instead of the simple syrup, then it'll be like rum, lime, strawberry puree. All right, that's your strawberry daiquiri. Your modifier is going to be the strawberry puree. And it's also going to be the sweetener. So uh, these rolls can also be doubled, but I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, an easy cocktail to, that I always use for every one of my lessons is going to be a margarita. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and write out uh, the, the recipe for margarita, tequila. Orange liqueur. Lime. And I'm gonna put agave nectar because I believe that should be a perfect uh a perfect sweetener for it okay so this right here this recipe i just sent in the chat that is your margarita um on the very beginning you're going to see what is the spirit so the spirit is tequila okay that's what we're working with the modifier is going to be our orange liqueur because um, that's margarita is considered a daisy drink. It's supposed to be something refreshing and easy to, to consume. So orange liqueur is basically that modifier that makes it that way. Um, lime is going to be your acidity. That's uh, yes. So that's your acidity. And then the agave nectar. Um, I chose this as my sweetener. Uh, so yeah, that's a sweetener. But you can also use something like simple syrup if you wish for your um for your margarita okay awesome so again sweetener simple syrup or agave we have our acidity which is our lime our modifier which is the orange liqueur and then our spirit which is tequila it's the easiest cocktail to use for this sort of um just to kind of understand the pillars here. All right. So if we were going to create a cocktail, um, the way that we do it is by, 
whatever is your favorite. Let's say you have a specific flavor that you love. Uh, for instance, a very popular flavor might be like prickly pear or lychee. Um, so you want to do something with that. Now, what you think about is, okay, I'm thinking about that as a modifier. That's your flavor. That's the cocktail that you want to be using. So you start off, bam, lychee. How do I want to, um, how do I want that flavor to come out? Do I want my lychee to be infused in my spirit or do I want it to be more of a, uh, some liqueur that I found that's lychee or do I want to do a sweetener of the lychee? So you got to figure that out. And then once you do, you'll know, oh, okay, let's say I'm doing a syrup, a lychee syrup. All right. So we're doing lychee syrup. That's going to be both my modifier and my sweetener. Now, what I need is a spirit that can really hold itself well with that flavor um, and an acidity that's going to uh, complement and also make that cocktail balanced because that's one of the biggest things that we're looking for in cocktail making is balance, all right? So acidity is always going to come from lime or lemon juice. Uh, other citrus like grape, uh, sorry, grapefruit and uh, orange, they're not gonna have, they're not gonna be able to compete with the acidity of lemon or lime. So those are going to probably need more of adjusting. So we do have this thing in most like uh, craft cocktail bars, which is called acid adjusting. And the grapefruit, we will acid adjust those or like orange will acid adjust those. And they're typically gonna be acid adjusted to the same acid of a lemon just because it's a lot easier, okay? Um, so we're looking for acidity and because we're using a syrup, you always want to use something strong like lime or lemon, okay? Uh, with a lychee, I see it as more of a refreshing cocktail. So I'm thinking, you know what? I'm gonna try this cocktail with uh, lemon. Lemon, I'm thinking that lemon flavor with the lychee is going to go good. I'm thinking like a lemonade almost, right? So a lychee lemonade sounds good to me. I'm gonna use that. Um, so we have our acidity, which is gonna be lemon, our sweetener, which is lychee syrup. And now we got to think about our spirit. If we wanna go an easy route, um, you might wanna add something else to it, but an easy route would be like vodka. Vodka has, or their job is sup supposed to be to not have any flavor, right? Uh, but we're mixologists, we like to have fun. So in this case, lychee syrup, lemon, I'm thinking gin would be really nice. Let's add some botanicals to that. Let's add some refreshingness to that. I think a spirit like gin would be really refreshing. So now this is our cocktail right here. It is the spirit gin, lychee syrup, and lemon. Okay. Um, after a long time of just reading a bunch of recipes, you will start to kind of understand, oh, you know what? I can do this much of that and this much of this, and it should be okay. So I, I've read many recipes in my life. So what I see here is like a two ounce gin, three quarter of an ounce of the lychee syrup, and then three quarter to one ounce of lemon juice. That's just how I see this uh, cocktail because I'm uh, I'm kind of referring to the daiquiri, right? So daiquiri is two ounces of rum, three quarter ounce of lime and three quarter ounce of simple syrup. All right, so that's how you make that a three. Let's go for, I'll go ahead and write that in. Rum, two ounce uh lime three quarter ounce and then simple syrup three quarter ounce okay that's your uh daiquiri okay daiquiri all right so that's what a daiquiri is um originally that's um uh, you can get the best balance just from there uh yeah so that's what you kind of want to start thinking like uh, in order to make cocktails. That is like a simple version. It's going to have three ingredients in it, but it does still cover all four of those pillars. 
of the sweetener, acidity, modifier, and the spirit. Okay. And then just to repeat our cocktail here, and it's the pillars that it is um, directly correlated with, our lemon is the acidity. The lychee syrup is covering both the modifier and the sweetener. And then our spirit is the gin. So that's how we can see our cocktail coming together. And uh, just like the Mr. Potato Head, we took the daiquiri and then we started uh, playing with it and switching out those same categories for something else. So instead of the rum here, we're using the gin. Instead of the lime, we're using the lemon. And then instead of the simple syrup, we've uh, used our lychee syrup that we had around. Is there any questions about that so far? Or any, uh, any questions about just any of this generally? Okay, great. So I'll just continue again, just make sure that if you do have a question, go ahead and write it into the chat um, at any time during this lecture. All right, cool. Um, all right, so that's pretty much how you're creating cocktails. The way that I um, go about it um, generally is just by reading a bunch of books. Um, there's a bunch of really great books out there that have a bunch of recipes. Um, I would get stuff like, uh, I would start off with this one right here. This is called Cocktail Codex. I'm not sure if it's uh, if it shows you backwards, but it's called Cocktail Codex. It is a Death and Co book, all right? Let me go ahead and write Death and Co. All right, so Death and Co is a bar itself. It started in New York City, and they are they have three incredible cocktail books. Uh, they have a bunch of recipes in them, and they also explain to you how to essentially bartend, you know, uh, at a really high level. Um, and it's it's pretty simple, you know. So I've taken lots of things like, uh, for instance, always shake a cocktail when there is acidity, dairy, egg, um, that sort of thing. Uh, just shake those. And then if it's something that's spirit forward, meaning something like a Manhattan, which is uh, rye whiskey with red vermouth and bitters, no acidity, no dairy, no egg, that's a stirred cocktail. So I would definitely buy these books. Let me uh, grab this other one. I would definitely grab these books and start reading them and use the, the cocktails here as an example for if uh, for anything that you're thinking of um, cocktail wise. All right. So these are the three cocktail books that I have. This right here, Death and Co. This is the first cocktail book. The second is our cocktail codex, which is really this one is probably the one that you would want to have if you want to learn how to create a lot of cocktails, if you want advice on how you want your menu to look, uh, just based off of guest experience, this is the book to go with. Uh, another one that is the most recent that kind of covers all ground. This is Death & Co. Uh, Welcome Home. Death & Co. Welcome Home is their newest book, and it just, it has all of that that I've mentioned in the two previous books except a lot more modernized and simplified too okay all right let's continue here oh man where are you? one moment everyone Okay. Um, all right, cool. So let's just get into flavor pairings as well. 
Um, I had recently got a book in the mail that's called Flavor Matrix. Let me go ahead and write that in here, Matrix. This is also a cookbook, but it does have these amazing charts. I haven't read them yet, but I do have, uh, I do believe that it's going to give, um, I do believe that it's going to give, what's it called? A good insight on flavor pairings. Uh, just because it has things like passion fruit and mustard, like how does that, how do those two go together? And they definitely do. So Flavor Matrix, that is a really good book to grab. Got a question here. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, as far as the time goes uh, on when we started, uh, we started at 6 p.m. PST, Pacific Standard Time. So I'm not sure what uh, what time that would be. Um, I don't know if it's 9 p.m. over there where you're at, but uh, we just started an hour later just because I was out and about for a sec. Oops. Let's see what everyone is reading. Flavor Matrix. Okay. There we go. Awesome. Um, no, I don't think you missed too much uh, here. We went over the pillars, the sweetener, acidity, modifier, spirit. You were here for that. And um, I think I just gave my normal intro, which is who I am and uh, uh, what I like, <laughs> I guess, which is New York way too much. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, you did not miss miss much at all. All right, so flavors. Let's see. Okay, so somebody here, pick a flavor, any kind of flavor. Just throw it into the chat here, and we're gonna have uh, we're gonna play around with these flavors here. Peach, that's an awesome flavor. That's a great flavor. That's uh, my, my girlfriend loves that flavor a lot. So peach, uh, that's a fruit. It's nice and sweet. It has, um, it's, it's kind of given like lychee, uh, grape, but in its own way. Um, so what you want to do with that is maybe you want to pair it with more uh, fruits. So like blackberry and peach go really well together. Uh, we like to think, uh, honey, we also think lemon. Uh, these are the flavor pairings that we're seeing with peach. Um, I also, what I like to do is I like to refer to um, cooking and like maybe there's a dish with uh, peaches, for instance, like pie, so brown sugar, um, butter even. So these flavors, whiskey, um, sorry, they just keep popping into my head. So these flavor pairings, you can also use the suggestions of cook, uh, of cooked dishes. Um, they definitely help with pairing all of these. Cherry, super good with it. Um, things that would not go good with it. Maybe something super tanniny like uh, pomegranate. Pomegranate might take it in a different direction that you're not trying to go into. Um, tanniny, tannin, tannin flavor. Um, it's basically a, like when you're drinking wine, you drink some wine, uh, red wine specifically, it gives you like a, in your mouth, it kind of squeezes your mouth a little bit. It almost has like a leather vibe to it. It just, it squeezes your mouth. Uh, that's what tannins are. It's not necessarily like sour or bitter. It's like somewhere in between those two. Um, it has a different take. So tannins is what you'll find in pomegranates, uh, uh, grape skin has a lot of that. So if you've ever just eaten the skin and you feel that tightness, that's the tannins that you're looking for when you're, when you're speaking flavors, that's what it is. Um, grape seeds have a ton of that. So if you really want a solid example, just bite and, um, taste the, the grape seed and it'll, it'll definitely show you mercilessly. Um, so, uh, grapeseed is a good example of what tannins are going to be. Uh, yeah. 
So um, what else is there? So minerally, like dry, whenever someone's talking about dry flavors, like I can see dry and mineral going pairing well with peach. And a cocktail in mind, it would be like a peach bellini, right? So a bellini, a peach bellini would be the peach along with a sparkling wine, okay? Um, whenever I'm thinking something super dry, I'm thinking like a French wine, a French sparkling wine. Um, one thing to note about that is that French uh, vineyards are going to be very different from American vineyards. The vineyards in France, their uh, roots go straight down. They don't water their plants there. The plants, they water themselves, essentially. They're going down and they're grabbing all of those minerals from the earth, as well as the water that is underneath the soil. Whereas here in, uh, in the U.S., uh, we water our our vines. So they're, the roots are going to be horizontal and they're just taking from whatever's on top. So they're not going to, they're going to be more sweet and more bold. Whereas French is going to be a lot more minerally. Um, just think of, just think of soda water or mineral water. That's mineral water. Uh, just think of mineral water. It's going to have like a, almost a saline type of taste. It's very subtle, but it's saline. Um, so that saline does pair well with peach or anything that's kind of like a peach. That's why Bellinis are great. Okay. And then for now, we are going to take a mini break for 10 minutes. We'll do a mini 10 minute break just to soak up all that information and then we'll get back and we'll talk about um, flavor pairings more in depth. And I'll also go over cocktails that we should know, must know cocktails. Okay, so meet back at uh, in 10 minutes from now, so at 40.
Okay, okay. Awesome. Hello, everyone. All right. So I just uh, got the book here. Uh, this right here is our Flavor Matrix book. Um, it is a super awesome book, especially for this topic. And I was looking at it in the beginning here. And this is a chart. I don't know if you can see that there. But there's a chart right there that's um, basically how to pair uh, certain flavors. Okay. Um, I have all of those right here. The very last one is a complimentary taste, whereas the other five, sorry, six, are going to be uh, balancing tastes. Okay. We all know what's sweet. We all know what's sour, spicy. Um, fat is going to taste like, you know, just the, the butter, the olive oil. It just gives it more of the texture, the creaminess. Uh, bitter... Um, it's like your salt and pepper and then umami, uh, umami flavor is going to be, uh, savory. It's going to, it's, it's basically savory. Uh, so it is like, um, meaty, I wouldn't say gamey, but, uh, more meaty side, uh, savory. Okay. So sweet, sour, spicy, fat, bitter, umami, and Salt, it just complements. Uh, it's a complementary flavor. So it's something that'll bring out those flavors already that already exist there. Um, so we take this and we also add it to our cocktails. For instance, I have a cocktail. Like uh, one of my secret ingredients for something like our margarita. Um, anything, honestly, with any kind of acidity, I like to add saline um, salt solution. All right, so um, salt solution. And that's something that can easily be made uh, at home or wherever. You just got to do 20% uh, salt to water and just dilute that salt into that water. Okay, so a fifth of whatever the water is, that's what you're going to be using. Okay. And uh, you just, uh, what I normally do is I just do a drop. So I would add it to a dropper. Let me find it real quick. Well, this is not the dropper, but this is a dropper. So this is a bottle right here and it's got the little uh, squeezer top. And then it's got the dropper uh, tubing, okay? I normally like to use a dropper, especially with like saline solution, because it's just like the salt itself will bring out all of those uh, flavors and it makes my cocktails a little bit more refreshing than just without it. So I like using salt solution whenever there's um, acidity at play. Uh, lemon or lime. Okay. Um, there are other occasions that it can be really good. Uh, for instance, just the like if you we think about a uh, chocolate chip cookie with salt on it it is incredible right you got the saltiness and you got the sweet so you got the salt sweet oh it's such a great combination so if i'm making like a, a chocolate espresso martini where i'm trying to highlight the chocolate i will add saline to that as well just to add to that um to make that complementary uh, uh flavor pairing there so this is just taste that we're looking at the sweet, sour, spicy, fat, bitter, umami, and salty. Um, then there's like our other flavors. So it's going to be a lot more, uh, what's the word that I, that I am looking for? It is going to be a lot more in depth. It's going to be more complex because we're, there's so many flavors that exist in our world. So it's, um, it's pretty difficult to grab them all. So, or to be able to know all of them. So this is just a massive chart here with a bunch of very uh, popular flavors um, that will give you an idea as well. I can't uh, write this all out, unfortunately. So um, let's go to fruity just because in bartending world, fruity is going to be one of the most sought out after cocktails from a lot of people. So 
let's look at fruity. Um, there's two different sides to this. So fruity, there's a dried fruit portion, and then there's like the more refreshing portion. Here it says uh, dried fruit is going to be meaty, um, which it kind of is. It's kind of uh, gummy, meaty. Uh, there's like um, caramelized taste to it. So we're thinking maybe dried fruit for something like a uh, seasonal festive. Um, a lot of people like to do maybe some something like with apricot, dried apricot, dried fig. Uh, the two of them combo maybe with something creamy, maybe make some sort of eggnog with it. Um, so that's what I think with that. Um, damn. Uh, berry will go really good with floral or spicy stuff. So if you haven't tried something like uh, blueberry and cardamom, those two flavors really go well together. So just write um, berry uh, flavors well with uh, floral flavors as well as spice flavors. And spice, I mean stuff like star anise, um, not necessarily like just chili pepper spice. I'm talking just the spices world, okay? Uh, bay leaf, whatever, just, uh, just try them all out and they should be pretty good together. Um, we got melon as well, like uh, flavor like melon, something that's more uh, very summery and refreshing. Uh, so the flavors that pair really well with this is definitely citrus. Uh, citrus doesn't just mean, in this case, it doesn't just mean lemon and lime, but it can mean uh, citrus like yuzu, um, citrus like a grapefruit would be really good with that. Um, we're looking at all of those. We're looking at even hybrids of the lemon lime hybrids. I don't even know what those are called. Citron even. Yeah, that'll be good. Uh, fruit like green uh, sulfur. So that's that's a weird one. Sulfur and the savory side. So they're saying that it pairs probably well with uh, something like egg. Yeah, so um, that's a very good question. Uh, so the question is, um, I saw a recipe for cranberry mimosa and it appeared to be garnished with rosemary sprig. Is the rosemary just for looks or for flavor too? Uh, the answer is uh, most garnishes, uh, not always, but they should have a utility. So in this case, I would absolutely think that rosemary has a uh, an, an essence to it as you're going to take a drink. So the purpose of the rosemary being there um, not only has to be with looks, but the smell itself with the cranberry and just the, the mineraliness of the, of the sparkling wine that you're taking, I feel like it is a really solid um, combination. Um, another good combination with rosemary would be with something like a mezcal. Mezcal goes really good with rosemary, uh, especially if you smoke the rosemary because now you're giving that smokiness that people are afraid of with mezcal uh, a bit more of a, of a welcoming uh, botanical to it. So that smell of rosemary with the taste of the smokiness from the mezcal uh, just emulsify. And then now, you're, uh, now you have some sort of complex uh, cocktail in your mouth. Um, another great example, um, one of my favorite uh, examples of why garnishes are very important as a utility is the white Negroni. Okay. White Negroni is an incredible cocktail. Um, it is equal parts. We'll do one ounce equal parts, all of them. It is a gin. Uh, make sure that the gin is indeed piney. Okay. And then one ounce of Sue's. Oops, won't let me write Sue's. Okay, Sue's liqueur, excellent. And then one ounce, uh, block. Okay, so that is the, those are just the three ingredients for our white Negroni here. It is the gin that's piney, the Sue's that's a very earthy herbal liqueur. Let me go ahead and grab that. This right here is Sue's. 
sorry, the light is pretty dominant. Okay, so Sus, this one right here, it's, let me go ahead and smell it so I can. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's got like very fresh herbs. Um, also kind of gives me like wet dirt, uh, dew on grass. That's kind of what you're getting here. And it's very pungent. It's almost like ginseng. I think of ginseng with this guy. Um, it's super, super delicious. Um, it is a powerful, potent flavor though. So with the gin, which is also botanical, will blend well with the Suze. And then the Lele Blanc, not the Filet Blanc. <laughs> Lele Blanc is this guy. It's a wine-based... It's like a vermouth, but this is a French aperitif vermouth, Lele Blanc. Okay, so this one is going to be dry as well, just like I mentioned with the roots and all that, that they're going down. It's the same concept. This is going to be a lot drier of a dry vermouth. Um, so you're going to get dry minerals from that. And then the last thing is going to be a coin of grapefruit. Okay. I was super surprised. So this cocktail comes in a rocks glass with a large cube. After it's been stirred and then poured into this, uh, into the vessel, you cut a coin of grapefruit. So it's going to look like a coin and you place that grapefruit pours up on top of the large ice cube so that every time the guest goes in for a cocktail, a drink, that grapefruit is right at the nose of the person. And I have to tell you that my experience with white Negronis has completely changed just by that simple fact alone. Um, it completely changes the flavor and it rounds it out. So smell is also part of taste. Uh, when I drink the white Negroni by itself without the grapefruit, it always feels like there's some big part missing. And that big part could be a really small part, which is just the grapefruit smell alone. So um, those are things to also keep in mind when you're creating cocktails is never uh, doubt the power of just like a lemon peel and orange peel. Always consider that in the back of your mind, because those are going to be the salt and pepper of cooking. So bitters, peels, those are the salt and pepper of cocktails. Okay. Awesome. Any other questions besides? Okay. Awesome. Now I'm going to go over some cocktails that we should know. Now I, I'm sure you are, you are already learning some of the classic cocktails, which is definitely something that you should definitely know. Um, but I'm going to go over some more obscure cocktails that are easy to make but really good to know as well, okay? Just because you already have um, a list of all those cocktails, you don't need the same list from me, okay? So the first one is going to be one of my favorite cocktails. It's called the Division Bell. Division Bell. One of my favorite cocktails um, that won't be on that list. It is a riff on a classic but it is probably the best uh, riff that I've had. Three quarter of an ounce of all four of these ingredients. Okay, three quarters of an ounce, all four of these ingredients. All right, so the first ingredient is mezcal. Second is Luxardo. Maraschino liqueur. Aperol is the third. And then the last ingredient is going to be lime. Okay. Three quarter of an ounce of all of these ingredients. Um, and then your garnish is going to be a grape fruit peel. All right, it's going to be served up in a coupe or martini glass. 
Okay, and that's everything you should know about that. Because we see that there's lime in this cocktail, we know that this is a cocktail that we're going to shake, um, shake with ice in our shaker tins, just because it's got the lime in there, which is acidity, okay? Um, so this is our cocktail, three quarter of an ounce of mezcal, three quarter of an ounce of Luxardo Maraschino liqueur, three quarters Aperol, three quarters of lime. This is a very, very awesome cocktail to know. Uh, one, it's super easy to make. Two, it's taste is completely complex and it definitely brings people, like I've definitely converted a lot of uh, people who are fearful to mezcal uh, over to the dark side. Okay, now they're definitely gonna be drinking mezcal because there are cocktails that will make that smokiness more welcoming. Um, a good way that I like to kind of compare it is not necessarily a barbecue, but the mesquiteness, the smokiness is welcoming in like meats and stuff. It's the same concept with mezcal. Um, it's smoky, but it can be really nice uh, depending on how you present it. All right, so Division Bell. That's a very good cocktail to know. That is, okay. Let me look here at my list of wonderful things. Okay, uh, another fun cocktail to learn is going to be a riff on the, the daiquiri, okay? The, the riff is going to be an Amaro no ni no daiki. Okay, Amaro no Nino. Let me see if I have the... Okay. Um, I don't have the bottle. But Amaro Nonino, it's a really good digestif. Um, I never would have guessed that this uh, digestif would be super good in a daiquiri setting. Uh, this is a complete... Uh, potato head move uh but we switch out the rum for the amaro nonino so we're looking at oh that's not what i wanted two ounces of amaro no ni no okay two ounces of amaro nonino and it's exact same build the exact same build three quarter of ounce of lime uh three quarter ounce of Simple syrup. Bam. Okay. What I do, what I like doing is adjusting it a little bit. I like to put one ounce of lime and then make it half an ounce of simple syrup. But I would suggest just trying it this way and then uh, seeing how you feel about this cocktail. Um, so because Amaro Nonino is herbal, um, this is a digestif. Again, this, is, this helps with digestion. Um, the flavor with the lime, which has that malic acid and the, the citric acid, it, it just works super well. It creates this nice tartness to it. It's kind of like drinking a tart herbal tea that's refreshing. So it's a very fun move uh, for just knowing this at the bar. I would just suggest slinging this if someone's asking you for something refreshing and you will nail it on the head here. So Amaro Nonino daiquiri, two ounces of Amaro Nonino, three quarter ounce lime, three quarter ounce simple syrup. It's the exact same build as a regular daiquiri. We're just switching the Amaro Nonino. Uh, we're putting the Amaro Nonino in and taking the rum out, okay? Mr. Potato Head move. We just switched the eyes, okay? Any questions so far? Cool. Um, I am going to go a little bit over because I do want to go over one more cocktail here uh, just to make sure we have a lot of good stuff. All right. So we're going to go over my favorite pina colada ever, ever in my entire life. All right. So pina coladas, they typically come out super sweet. But this pina colada comes out incredibly refreshing, and it's something that you can drink more than just once in one night. 
you can drink like four of these and not feel sick and uh, all sugared out. It's a super good refreshing cocktail. All right. So pina colada. Pina colada. All right. This is Ivy Mix. Favorite. This is her recipe. This is her recipe. Ivy Mix's recipe. Okay. For those of you who want to look more into it. Okay, so it's going to be one ounce of cachaca, cachaca. All right, I recommend this bottle right here of cachaca. It is called oh, Novo, Novo Fogo. Okay, this is the silver, Novo Fogo. I'll write it down. So one ounce of Novo Fogo cachaca, three quarter ounce of white rum okay uh half an ounce of dark rum then we're doing a quarter of an ounce of aged jamaican rum all right so we're also going to do one ounce of cocoa biz all right and coco biz is just um coco lopez and coco milk mixed at equal parts okay that's what coco biz is um half an ounce of lemon juice three quarters of an ounce of pineapple juice. Uh, you can do fresh uh, and dull at equal parts. Okay. And then our last one is going to be one teaspoon of simple syrup. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much everything here. It is a little bit tweaked, uh, but that's okay. Um, we got one ounce cachaca, three quarter ounce white rum, half an ounce dark rum, quarter ounce of aged Jamaican rum, one ounce of cocoa biz, a uh, half an ounce of lemon juice, three quarter ounce of pineapple juice, and one teaspoon of simple syrup. Okay. And that is Ivy Mix's recipe. Uh, this is a shaken cocktail shaken uh and then we pour this over crushed ice in pint glass or hurricane glass if you have it okay uh, as far as garnish goes for this one, this is uh, purely for looks and fun. Uh, whenever you look at tiki cocktails, the garnishes are going to be more exciting and fun. Uh, that's kind of the, the theme for them. So you'll see lots of fire, uh, lots of uh, kindling above that fire to make it look cool. Uh, umbrellas or like uh, Japanese lanterns. Uh, some people put like random hamburgers on top. I don't know what's going on, but the garnishes, they, they're just uh, for fun most of the time, sometimes for utility. Uh, so in this case, it would be like a lime husk inverted with 151 of Don Q or Bacardi set to flame with a cherry inside and then pineapple fronds. Uh, honestly, it's a dealer's choice. All right. And that's everything for today. Um, if you want to ask any other questions, my handle for uh, Instagram is at rudacious underscore. Okay. Uh, you can find me. I'm probably shaking a, a shaker tin on the on the cover there. So uh, you find me there. And if you have any questions at all at any time, you can always ask me via Instagram. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. And have a solid night.
Oh, uh, yeah. So simple syrup. Uh, it's not. It's not that basic. So simple syrup. It's going to be equal parts. Equal parts sugar, uh, just regular cane sugar, uh, to water. Okay. So let's say you're using one cup of sugar. Use one. Use one cup of water. And then you mix to dilute the two. And that there's your simple syrup. Um, another thing too is uh, you could do like a semi-rich syrup and a rich syrup. So semi-rich would be instead of one cup of sugar, you'd be using one and a half cups of sugar to one cup of water. And then if you want to do a rich syrup, it would be two cups of sugar to one cup of water. Awesome. Um, and a lot, another thing too, is in many bars, they'll be using like heat and stuff for those, uh, for those syrups. Uh, my recommendation, if you want your cocktails to truly present themselves as refreshing is just by mixing them at room temperature. So just shake them up, stir them at room temperature and wait until it fully dilutes. And that's the perfect simple syrup you'll ever make at a bar. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.